Welcome to our presentation on data visualizations. As my colleague uh, mentioned before, we plan to have this uh, introduction into our MSc program in marketing analytics. And my plan for today is to rather take you on a trip. My plan is therefore to come uh, and uh, present to you um, some of our greatest uh, softwares that we, we access in the marketing technologies, then take you and together go and visit the moon and come back and visit Germany and Ecuador, and then maybe convince you to join us in Southampton. Why data visualizations are important? We live in a world that is so rich in data, um, but the actual translation of the insight into the story of data is very hard to obtain. It's not as simple as it might sound. In our communication world, to use effective visuals means to look for convincing views that narrate or tell a certain story. How do we do that? Let's look at the present marketing technology landscape. And you can see this amazing transition and amazing dynamic from 2011 until 2020. You will see that we've started using technologies to support our marketing efforts from around 150 platforms, and we've got today to more than 8,000 platforms. And these platforms are mainly um, solutions, technical solutions that support our subdomains. So we have advertising and promotion technologies, content and experience, social relationships. And if you take a look at data that supports our domain, data analysis, data visualizations, you'll see a huge dynamic and growth in the number of platforms that support the analysis of our data gathered for marketing purposes. Let's take a look at the entire technological landscape in marketing. And all these little dots and little names are mainly for marketing purposes, but these blue regions, the, the ones in the center, are shared by the majority of all the others. Let's take a look further into our marketing technological landscape. And you will see several subcategories in which visualizations and data analysis are quite important. So in the dashboards and data visualization, this first category has a lot of platforms. What we are doing is not necessarily in our MSc program, is not necessarily training you to use all of these platforms. It's impossible. The dynamic of our environment is growing even further than other platforms. So, what happens is rather what we do in our program here is to prepare you to become agile learners. So that means that we provide the theoretical knowledge for you, but also some transferable skills so that you will become a very dynamic, able learner to adjust and learn even further in the future. So all these platforms that were presented in my previous slides are not necessarily the ones that give us answers. When I say us, I mean managers, decision makers, or users of technologies. Therefore, we've seen that these technologies need further insight. So that's why we need marketing analysts. You become uh, translators of information. 
So for us, in order to use these tools and to use huge amounts of data, we need also to understand how people learn and understand information. And because understanding and translating information is rather a human cognition phase and a process for us, what we've seen in, in the research is that almost 65% of people are rather visual learners. If that is the case, then it means that for us, these people that translate information, we should focus our attention on creating visual communication. So what happens with visualizations of data? We need to take into consideration how people perceive and process information. And in order to do that, we need to understand our brains, how our brain works. So let me show you some examples. And this is where, as I promised, I take you to the moon. This is a crater on the moon. And if you'd like, close your eyes for one second. What happens now? The same crater, just by rotating the image, is transformed. And even our mind knows it's the same picture. But if we take a look at this image closely, we would see that we climb a hill now. It's such a very small mountain that our brain is translating from this particular image. Another example of how our minds work when we see visualizations. For example, in this visual, I would kindly ask you to tell me which color do you think is having the highest density in this visual without counting the squares, if you can. Which color is having the highest density in this image? What do you think? If we take a look, maybe we would choose the orange one or the blue one. But if we take all the squares and try to count them, what we see is that we have exactly 16 squares, orange, blue, and gray. So practically, our perception is influenced by the intensity of color and also by the position of color in that particular visual. Another principle, how important it is the position of a visual and the position of the color in a group of dots, for example. We have again, 18, uh, 16, sorry, 16 dots. If we group them, that visual will be translated by our minds as we have already four categories of dots, even, if, even though they are quite the same. If we use, for example, colors, we will then transform that visual in two categories of dots. And finally, if we use groups and colors, we will get an entirely new meaning to that same context, the same 16 dots. But in here, your mind will also visualize a little square that has importance or maybe looks for further information. So practically, um, in data, what we're looking is for meaning. In visuals, we are waiting for explanations. <clears throat> so colors will receive a certain code in the way we present data, either by changing the hue or by changing the saturation. In this case, we can reflect the intensity 
of, of theta, or by changing the value or the brightness of a color of our choice from light to darker visuals. So let's take an example. How do we tell a story, the same story in three different scenarios? So I would kindly invite you to choose between the following three versions of the same story to tell us which version do you think is most is the most convincing one. So for example, we pick the story of food expenditure for one week. So again, we travel a bit, we try to compare Germany with Ecuador. So in Germany, the average food expenditure for one week is around $500. In Ecuador, $32. How do we visualize this story? We have here one visual, that's solution one, scenario one. This is scenario two, a different perspective or a different angle. How about having two images together? A family with food that costs $500 for a week in Germany, and in Ecuador, another image that reflects the same story. Which one is more um, loyal, is telling the story in a better way? Let me know what you think. So, practically, following these rules of visuals and perceptions, we create and we start to understand our domain even better. How we create effective visualizations? First of all, we play with data. We need to gather data. So, we might end up having static visuals, or dynamic visuals that are live. So they update continuously depending on what is the connection with the data. If we have live visualizations, those will change as the data changes. So in digital environments, for example, in digital marketing environments, we would have a platform, for example, Google Analytics will give us the possibility to either reflect on data that we had received for a long period of time ahead and compare it with the present situation. That might be a static type of visualization. And we might have live visualizations that integrate what is happening now on our website, for example, so we can have dynamic visuals. But before we, we go into visualizing data, we need to ask questions. We need to discover the patterns within that particular data source. And we need to draw meaning of the data before we actually design our visuals. Then a creative, visually driven process requires empirical and mathematical approaches and skills. And I'm sure our students for our MSc Marketing Analytics, before they even apply to our program, have already a very rigorous um, mathematical uh, set of skills. But we also explore together new tools here. And then finally, it requires subject matter knowledge in marketing. So that's what we provide for you in our MSc program in marketing analytics. Let's see some further examples. Let's start with some visualizations um, charts, for example. And you see here four main categories for comparison, comparing um, variables, distribution of data, composition of data, if we're trying to understand better 
how our data behaves or if we're trying to evaluate relationships between different variables. So we might again have static versus dynamic charts. And finally, what we've seen uh, as a very useful tool, dashboards. And probably everyone here knows what a dashboard does. It has mainly two purposes. One is to visually communicate, convey what the data is telling us for certain indicators or measurements. But also it gives us the possibility to check and compare the same measurements over the time. This dashboard is from Google Analytics. It gives a preview on the pay-per-click uh, tool used by this particular company. What are the click-through rates compared with um, clicks, the um, calculation of clicks versus impressions and then conversion rates and then it evaluates how much we pay, what, um, what uh, ads are basically better uh, positioned and more efficient. The second day, you should, uh, dashboard sorry, is reflecting on the situation for a website. What is the traffic? What are the sources that give us traffic on our website? Again, it's including visuals to convey the meaning of the data. And these dashboards can be updated quite easily once they are designed. And one last example. I will take you to another uh, scenario, the number of tricks or treats given in a certain time by one family. So this data is reflecting on what happened between 2008 and 2018 on the evening of Halloween for one family. So what we've discovered is the dynamic of how many treats are, were given. And what we see here is a simple bar chart but it is receiving context for the same data. So we see the dynamic from 2010 to 2011 and so forth. The same visual can be improved even further with visual elements that will attract the eye and set a hierarchy within that particular visual. So this one is bringing new symbols and further context. It's creating a code to our colors. What colors should we use for Halloween? So we use the same elements, the same coding within our visuals to uh, enhance the translation and the meaning into our visualizations. And finally, a vertical type of visual that is bringing together function and design. And if you would like to take a moment to, to look into this visual, consider or maybe share with us, what do you think might be the important factor that makes this visualization beautiful or attractive to your eyes? So in conclusion, what we've noticed is that presentations have a huge impact on the way data is received and um, understood. Mood and emotions have a huge impact on our critical thinking. Uh, but um, this domain of data analysis and data visualizations, we'll see uh, more and more uh, growth over the years. So you will see that our world will be transformed in no time in a very, very visual and synthesized type.
type of communication. And we can see that already uh, nowadays. The important element is how we present truths and facts in our, uh, in our communication. So for, for marketing analysts, our role practically becomes um, an intermediary, a translator of those truths and facts. So we need to be very rigorous, but we also need to be very ethical in our presentation of data through visuals and through other methods. Nobody will be able to comment on actual data that reflects facts and truth. And here is the importance of a really rigorous and serious marketing analyst that can come into a team and provide that uh, realistic reflection on our data. So the, the marketing analyst is somewhere positioned between specialists in IT, in those software packages that we, we've seen, and between a marketer that focuses a lot on strategy, communication, um, trying to provide um, more uh, um, relationships to the users. And the marketing technologist or the marketing analyst is making sense of tools, of technologies and data for the purpose of uh, translating them and providing advice to the marketers and to the management. I have also included here some uh, readings for you to go through if you would be interested. And if you have any questions, please let us know.